Okay, my booty boobs. Hello. Gorgeous. <laughs> Today I got three projects to work on. First, we are going to be talking about the poll that we did in yesterday's logo, My Wine. Then after that, we're going to make two logo options for Alex. We got feedback from him. And finally, the last thing on today's agenda, I will be making updates to my friend's comic book. So all that being said, with a knuckle on a head, let's get started. Or, you know, let's go back to bed. <laughs> no, no, not really. Let's do stuff. Here we are with the logo options I made yesterday for My Wine. So far, the butler boy is has the majority by far it's up at 65 percent the other door ideas are both at 17 equally so i think they're equally weak <laughs> i mean it's just that like the idea is there but the execution is not coming together right it's hard to make it look like an actual door and a wine without adding all these unnecessary pieces like the the doormat and other things. So this was a good mental exercise, but you know what we should do? We should, let's just, let's just kill it. Let's just forget about it. If you guys have done this one before, I would love to see what you guys did for this one, my wine. Oh, email it to me. Okay, that'd be good. So we will consider Tuxedo Boy as the winner for my wine logo challenge. Triple snaps, double snaps. Oh, also leave a like on the video if you've never ever worn a tuxedo in your life. I have not. They actually asked me to be the next James Bond, but I turned him down. I thought making design stuff was cooler. <laughs> no, big mistake, big mistake. <laughs> My turtle doves, let's hop into the project for Alex. So far, TV Headbird has 43% of the vote, which was, I think, very helpful. And now we have feedback from Alex and he liked the TV Headbird boy and the uh, hatchet with the reel. And he did give one comment about the bird head boy. If we can make the TV look a little bit more like a modern TV, that would be appreciative. And then the second idea he came up with, which I thought was super clever, on the reel, instead of hacking into the reel, it should be cutting the film as it comes out. Because he really likes editing video, and I think that makes a lot more sense. At one point also was that in his adventures through the woods as a, as a woodsman, <laughs> he didn't really use a hatchet. He's more of a machete so if we could change it to that that would be good i also sent him uh, a number of inspo pics these are the ones i sent i thought this kind of natural line work idea would lend itself really well to kind of the idea of nature and and it might come across as a little bit more artsy because I think what he does is actually extremely artistic. So um, I, he seemed to like that. And then he sent me this for a little bit more inspo and some cool colors to use. So we're gonna work off that and that idea and that's what we're gonna go with. So let's get started on this logo and see what we can come up with. Okay, Lego my ego, don't step on a Lego. Let's get started. What's up, homies? <laughs> okay, so this is actually a really interesting technique and I use both Photoshop and Illustrator. What I do in Photoshop is I import my sketches, of course. You can do this with, I use an app called Cam Scanner. It's really cool. If you've been here, you, you know I use it. Actually, some design champions recommended it to me, so thank you guys. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually taking a brush and I'm coloring over all, I'm just coloring in, in the whole thing. And I'm just, I actually just changed the feet position because I didn't like the foot position there. But it's very simple. After I got um, the whole thing colored in, oh, what you could do is you could mask out. I'm just erasing because I'm a lacy boy. <laughs> but what you should do is mask out um, the lines. So what this will leave you is filled in space, but with lines, see-through lines. So when you put it on a dark background, all the lines will be dark, basically. And that's what we're going for. And um, I'm doing this with a brush freehand on my Wacom tablet because it really, I didn't want to start in Illustrator because then all my, my pen lines would be pretty straight and we're looking for something a lot more organic than that. So I got Alex's inspo uh, board image and I grabbed some colors from there and now once, once the image was on the dark color I could really see, okay, what lines need help? And so I went back through and and uh, change kind of the width between lines just to give it a little bit more of a natural, organic, drawn feel. So hopefully you guys are following along with the, with the process so far. It's really not, not too difficult. And uh, now it's here with the, the real, the real hatchet boy. No, it's not a hatchet, it's a machete. <laughs> I wish I had a big mustache, then I could boom. <laughs> Anyways, uh, same process here. I'm filling in all the shapes. And then uh, 
what you should do is mask out all the lines that you don't want to show. <laughs> Very simple stuff. And uh, then you can make adjustments as needed if things seem too big or too small. But make sure that you're keeping that uh, organic feel. And I found that it helps keeping most of the lines similar width but adjusting here and there, just so that you can mostly see all the lines most of the time, but that it never gets too, too much of the same ordeal going on. All right, and then, oh, that was an important step. So then I just take a screenshot of the images black and white in Photoshop, and then you open that image in Illustrator. And then in Illustrator, you use the image trace tool. And then that, what that will do is just vectorize your image. And then if it's in black and white already, it's super easy. So now I have totally vectorized designs that look pretty hand drawn, um, but they're still vectors so we can scale them and, and use them as properly as a logo. And, and then also, of course, in Illustrator, we can adjust any lines quite easily. And um, this is also another technique I like to use. I like to um, get a font and then draw over it freehand so that it makes the font, again, mostly, mostly pro looking, but just a little bit uh, customized. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, also, this style is pretty good with, uh, if you wanna like put some texture over it, I think that's cool. Most, most of this stuff looks good when it's smaller, actually. You just want like small, dainty stuff. <laughs> so uh, here were the options that I came up with. I'm a real boy, like Pinocchio, <laughs> and fly away boy. <laughs> so let me know in the poll right now, which one's your fave? Design champs, those are the two projects I came up with. I really like that style, but I actually think we might ha I might have to make a just an outline version, but that, that wouldn't be a big change. So we'll see how it goes. And also, if you have some ideas for the logos, you could, le read it. You could leave them in the comments and, and probably both me and Alex will read them. See if we can steal your guys' ideas. Okay, Panda Express, before we hop into the third and final comic book project, uh, let's start our discussion time. Yesterday, I asked you, what do you guys do to get more creative? Up Cody says, a great way to generate new ideas is to take inspiration from outside of your creative field. So he says if he was making a movie, he'd take inspiration from books, graphic design, and music. And this was a really great idea. A lot of people echoed on taking idea from different mediums. Julie Stone says, giving myself constraints when starting a project has done a lot to help my creativity while working on the project. I feel like for some reason, when you work within a box, you could explode the box a little bit easier. Taylor Edwards gives some advice in a really practical sense. He says, I find logos in the real world, and then I take a picture of it. Once I get home, I recreate the logo in my own way. Thank you so much for your comments, Awesome Possum. I'm really learning a lot from the ideas you guys are giving. That leads me to the question of the day, and today is, today's the real Wednesday. <laughs> I got it, guys, I got it, don't worry about me. <laughs> I'm mentally okay, maybe. <laughs> I would love to know what are you most excited about? Do you have any creative projects you're working on or aspects that are coming up in your design career that really get you fired up? So let me know in the comments below. Thanks, Chicos and Chicas. Okay, my band of design champs, here's a comic book that my friend produced. This was the first issue, so I'm updating one of the pages for the second issue. Um, basically, what I did on the first one was this cover page. I made custom, the empties is custom typography for me, and then this is my design as well. The other pages I worked on were these back two ones. This is a a special thank you page to the supporters. So, but right now I'm updating this page right here. Kristen had a really clever idea of making like a diner menu be the credits page. So we have like appetizers, story by Kristen, main dishes, art by Eli Powell, etc. So I'm just going through and updating all of the things for Kristen for this second issue. If you're into comic books and you want to check out more about the MTs, I will leave a link in the description below. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, there will be an episode of You Guys Rule. I'm gonna find a couple projects to utterly annihilate. <laughs> so come back for that if you want in on the destruction. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Let me know about the logos and let me know what you're most creatively excited for. I said that wrong. By the way, you look very nice today. Oh, okay, that was embarrassing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I embarrassed you. <laughs> I will see you later, alligator, and stay awesome, possum. And, and don't forget, work on those snaps. <laughs> Bye, guys.